Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to test a very affordable 25 millimeter dome tweeter from Peerless, and it's the OC 25SC65-04. And so in this test, I wanted to mount it to a custom 3D printed horn, which is horn number 1900, and then do a full set of measurements. And uh, from those test uh, results and subjective listening, I was able to or I decided to create a speaker plan set based on this tweeter. So I'm gonna go through that as well in this video and show uh, the overall uh, design of a two-way uh, desktop monitor. And uh, yeah, so what caught me on to this tweeter in the first place was a review done by um, Audio Express Testbench on a similar tweeter um, the Eminent Super Tweeter Soft Dome SD28. And so um, as I was looking through it, I was uh, quite impressed by the frequency response, the uh, low distortion, and then also the CSD plot looked extremely good. And so when I was making my usual weekly order with Parts Express, I uh, saw a very similar tweeter um, here. And so it was. 22 or 2149 US dollars each and so it's actually even more affordable uh, on some other websites like DigiKey where I think it's $19 so it's kind of ironic that I'm testing a, a $22 tweeter um, comparatively to other uh, drivers that I test that are you know uh, much larger and much more costly um, but uh, objective test data is, is you know it doesn't it's cost blind right so it either performs well or it doesn't and so um, in this test we'll see uh, that it does indeed perform quite well so what I uh, did is I designed a custom horn um, measuring 15 centimeters in diameter by 5 centimeters deep and then um, the uh, tweeter just mounted uh, directly onto the back here you can see the 3d printed horn and then I just taped the tweeter onto the back for the testing so we're gonna get right into the measurement side of it so it's a ferro fluid damped cooled driver and so we have a very smooth impedance as a result the FS is around uh, 1.4 kilohertz which is fairly uh, high for a tweeter but um, it, it does limit its lower bandwidth use so here we can see the frequency response on horn number 1900 and so we have the typical transfer function of the horn itself but you'll notice that the response is actually extremely linear free from any uh, high Q peaks or anything like that that would indicate problems and so the next step was to implement just a simple passive uh, high pass filter using a 3.3 microfarad capacitor and so you can see the effect of the capacitor here providing our target slope and so you could uh, see here that our minus 6 dB down point is around 1.5 kilohertz so it gives us kind of the perfect uh, curve for a one and a half kilohertz crossover point and then you can see here that we have a very flat response and then we have a peak at the kind of the 13 14 kilohertz region uh, but it's pretty benign just simply because the the horn is pretty directional in that area and so it's not projecting a lot of energy into the room uh, at that frequency and so if you listen just a little bit off axis then it will uh, simply correct itself so here's the off axis color polar map for the horn in tweeter combo and you can see here this kind of uh, really brings out uh, actual performance so we're using a 12 db smoothing which is the highest that I can go in the software and so you can see that it's extremely well behaved um, off axis so I'm looking at the time domain performance uh, it's very clean burst decay but we have a little tiny bit happening here at the 14 kilohertz region um, but it's not really anything uh, even in the CSD plot it barely shows up as anything but we have a very fast decay um, this this ridge here you can see this is just um, the settings in the software where I've set the opening gate too early um, and so it shows up what you really want to see is once that sound stops and and you want to see how quickly it decays uh, after it's stopped so just to clarify that 
Okay, so looking at harmonic distortion, we tested it at 85 and 95, and so you can see here that at 2 kilohertz, we're at 0.034%, so extremely low distortion figures. Uh, increasing the test SPL to 95, we see a slight rise in second harmonic, but it's still extremely low at 0.1%, so completely inaudible. Uh, looking at IMD, um, you can see a very clean IMD plot using the multi-tone. Um, we're at minus 73 dB at the 2 kilohertz region, and then it rises slightly to minus 70 dB uh, for the 10 kilohertz region. So um, if we increase the, the test SPL to the 95, then we'd likely see this number uh, correspondingly lower at minus 60 dB. So um, minus 60 dB is my kind of in-house target for sound quality and so um, all of that from a $22 tweeter. It says $13 but that's from DigiKey. So um, okay so I decided to uh, rig up a two-way solution and I have these uh, little 3 inch Mark Audio Alpair 5.3 full range drivers and so I mounted it in a test cabinet and had a listen. This particular model uh, doesn't have a spider so the only thing keeping the voice coil in alignment is the uh, rubber surround and so there's a few Mark Audio drivers that now um, have the surround omitted or the spider omitted and so what I found was that this little three inch driver actually sounds quite good um, across the bandwidth that has actual bass, um, even in a small enclosure, um, obviously at, at low listening levels because it's not, not gonna do miracles. But um, so yeah, it had a very lively uh, sound character as well, which um, definitely helped out with it being such a small driver, um, very pleasant and musical little driver. So. Um, I settled on a 2.2 liter bass reflex tuned to 80 hertz and so um, you can see here just uh, with one watt input uh, we're getting just around 89 I'm not sure if that's right actually um, it's yeah it's maybe it's a 4 ohm driver I'll have to see why it's uh, up to 89 which is pretty high for a 3 inch um, so I looked at using a larger enclosure to try to get a little more bass out of it, um, but what I found was that it quickly ran out of X-Max. It only has three millimeters of X-Max, and so um, I found that with a smaller enclosure, I was able to get a little more output out of the driver. And so you can see here, with 10 watts of input power, we're getting 95 uh, 96 dB output at one meter and then you can see over here um, the X max is going to be you're only going to get it down to about 70 Hertz and then um, if you're playing musical content below 70 Hertz then uh, it's you know it's quickly gonna start uh, clipping there but at much lower listening levels for a desktop solution you know we're at 55 65 DB listening level then you're gonna be well below um, the X max capabilities of the driver so sorry about that um, okay so uh, moving on um, so just like I mentioned earlier the subjective listening on the tweeter um, the tweeter actually sounds a little more dynamic than other soft dome tweeters that I've tested uh, and it has excellent clarity and it did respond quite well to you know replacing upstream components uh, you can see from the test the distortion data we're right into the distortion level of you know that's commonly associated with electronics and so I found that um, you know this was definitely in the audiophile uh, territory for sound quality and it did respond well to you know upstream component changes and and things like that so um, like I mentioned the little three inch produces great bass um, within moderate listening levels and has a great overall clarity okay so um, what I decided to do from there is create a plan set for a, a small desktop monitor and so the plans are available on my site and it includes you know the cabinet drawings the STL file to 3d print the horn as well as the uh, crossover um, so what I'm gonna do is just go over uh, to SolidWorks and kind of show you uh, what, what what we're dealing with here so I just put a laptop in there for scale so they're very tiny 
Um, and then I have a drawing for the crossover, not just the schematic, but also um, how the components should be arranged on the crossover board, uh, just so that you're able to fit the crossover into the enclosure. And it's, it act, I actually specify um, what inductors you need to buy, you know, to, that are small enough to fit inside. Okay, so um, I do provide a bill of material for crossover components, both from Mattisown and from Parts Express. So here you can see um, 3D printed horn. I'll show you another version of the horn where it's a little uh, more simple on the backside for those that are looking to CNC machine the horns. Um, I wanted to keep the overall appearance as clean as possible. And so, um, you know, what I did, so I, I kind of wanted it to look clean even at an angle. And so I tried to kind of hide the support, the rear support as much as I could, which is why I have this flat here and kind of sizing this. So this is um, uh, 20, uh, let me just see here how thick this is. Um, anyways, so it's just, I'll open up this part so you can see. So the tweeter uh, fits into a pocket here and then you use a Forstner drill bit, inch and um, three quarter I believe it is, uh, to drill out the pocket and then the tweeter just sits in there and then the horn goes over top of that and then is uh, screwed to this support as well. So you can see here in the back there's a drilled hole that comes up from underneath and so this actually um, creates an opening for the wires to be fed down through into uh, the base enclosure and so the wires go down through and so that there's drawings specific detail drawings for where those holes go so uh, um, I'll show you in a sec the the you know drawing for the baffle and that so so it's just rear ported with regular binding posts so I'm gonna go to the uh, product page where you can see I'm just gonna see it here yeah, so here's the plans available on my site. You can see the renders. Um, so here's an example of an assembly drawing showing you how it goes together. And then, oops. And then there's actual detail drawings for each component, you know, for the front baffle and that. So, okay, so it includes, like I mentioned, the, the 3D CAD files, passive crossover schematic. Uh, the cabinet construction. Um, the Mark Audio is $32. So this is this is a pretty good budget build for those wanting. It produces excellent sound. The only the only uh, limitation would be the maximum output SPL, uh, and that's mainly due to the limitation of the the Mark Audio driver. So you can see here, this is an example. Um, so it's a third order low pass on the bass, and then a first order on the treble. And then I've built out the the uh, actual components, and I also have a separate sheet that's um, if you're going to order the crossover components from Parts Express. So, so there's two versions of the horn files. There's the 3D printed version, and then there's a CNC version, which you can see here it's a little more simple, and it doesn't have the undercut there. So. Uh, let me just see here. I think that's it for this video. Um, oh, so published frequency response. You can see here, uh, very linear uh, response, and then the off-axis of the system, uh, and then the burst decay. Um, so yeah, just um, yeah. So this is uh, plan set uh, 1900 um, because it uses the 1900 horn. Uh, so yeah. Um, Put a, I'll put the product in the description there as well as the original blog post with the measurements and that. So um, yeah, that's it. Take care and have a great day.